Hello and welcome to the kickoff of year three of Shakespeare. So named because I thought it was going to take me about a year to get through all of Shakespeare's monologues. And here we are starting into year three and we're only like halfway through King Lear, which is tells me there's like another two years to go. So yay for year three of Shakespeare starting today. Woohoo! Um, so anyway, today we get to hear from the Fool in what the Folio calls Act 2, Scene 2, what a lot of other versions call Act 2, Scene 4, because a lot of other versions take Edgar's weird little monologue that from a couple days ago to be Act 2, Scene 3 all by itself, because it's kind of a standalone thing, where he, in response to running away from home because they want to kill him, because they think that he tried or wants to try to kill Gloucester, he's going to disguise himself as a beggar and go by the name Poor Tom and just go live in the wilderness in hopes that he survives and that they don't find him, because if they find him, then they're going to kill him. So the other stuff that's happening in this larger Act 2, Scene 2, as it is known in the folio, is everybody is descending on Gloucester's house. Gloucester obviously already lives there, so Edgar and Edmund would be there anyway. Reagan and Cornwall are coming to Gloucester's because they have heard that Lear is raucous and they don't want to deal with him in their own house. Goneril sent her servant with letters to her sister to be read at at Gloucester's house saying that yes, Lear is raucous and, and we need to, you know, present a united front against him. And Lear sent Kent, who is also in disguise because Kent was actually banished, but Kent holds such dear love for Lear that he disguised himself so he could still be close to him and be a, a servant to him. Um, Lear sent Kent to Gloucester's with letters to Gloucester sort of appealing, saying that Goneril had not been nice to him and his hundred men and that he had dismissed, or she had dismissed half of his train of 100 knights. So when Kent got to Gloucester's, he ran into Oswald, Goneril's servant, and they had a little bit of a skirmish, which when Reagan and Cornwell found out about that, they put him in the stocks overnight. So he's been sitting in the stocks overnight. And now in what other versions call Act 2, Scene 4 at the beginning of that, but in the folio version, like after Edgar's had his monologue, we get Lear entering the space with the fool and like a serving man, whatever. And they see Kent in the stocks and they're like, you know, what's going on? What happened? And Kent's like, well, your, your daughter and your son-in-law did this. And Lear's like, no. And they're like, he's like, yeah. And yesterday's monologue was Kent recounting the story of what got him put in the stocks, which infuriates Lear because he's got a bit of a temper. So he goes inside to find Reagan to try to sort the whole thing out because he doesn't believe that his daughter would insult him so thoroughly as to stalk his servant. He considers that worse than murder. And while he's inside looking for Reagan, Kent is like, so how come Lear is showing up with so few people with him? And the fool is like, ah, if you had asked that question and gotten stalked for it, you would have deserved, you would have deserved getting stalked for that. And Kent's like, what, I, what are you talking about? What's going on? And the fool says, we'll set thee to school to an ant to teach thee there's no laboring in the winter. All that follow their noses are led by their eyes, but blind men, and there's not a nose among twenty, can smell him that's stinking. Let go thy hold when a great wheel runs down a hill, lest it break thy neck with following. But the great one that goes upward, let him draw thee after. When a wise man gives thee better counsel, give me mine again. I would have none but knaves follow it, since a fool gives it. That sir which serves and seeks for gain, and follows but for form, will pack when it begins to rain, and leave thee in the storm. But I will tarry, the fool will stay, and let the wise men fly. The knave turns fool that runs away, the fool, no knave, per die. So he's, he's making a bit of a, a mockery of things, as he does, because he's the fool. But the fool is also the truth teller in this play. Um, he's the one that calls Lear out on Lear's stuff. And basically the sort of the gist of what he's saying here is that it might be wiser for Kent to not be following Lear anymore because he's, he's in the winter of his reign. Um, he's, he's running downhill, he's losing steam, he's losing his mind, he's losing all that stuff, and it might be, it might be unwise, as in, like, Kent might be taken with him on this downward slope, on this downward fall, if he continues to follow Lear. But then he's also like, you know, I just, only stupid people would ever take my advice. So he puts, like, the caveat on it, because he doesn't want to be running around telling people that they shouldn't be helping Lear, because 
Lear does need some sort of help, but he's also trying to give Kent a warning that, that he should be looking out for himself and be careful where he puts his loyalties right exactly now. And Kent is like, where did you learn all this stuff? And the fool's like, not in school, huh? And then that's just enough time for Lear to come storming back in because Reagan doesn't want to see him. And tomorrow we get to hear some of Lear's reaction to Reagan not wanting to see him now that he has arrived at Gloucester's place. So anyway, I will see you tomorrow for more as we dig further into year three of Shakespeare. Mwah.